Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rally Caps, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs looking to build a business for the long haul. Today we are joined by the one and only Samuel Elkins. Initially exploding onto the Instagram scene in 2014, Sam has refined his own highly sought after style, feeling in his photography across his seven year career. And his ironclad work ethic has landed him commission work with Aston Martin, Land Rover, Beats, Toyota, Infinity, Armani, Under Armour, Uber, Volvo, Bluntstone, Garmin, and Audi. Wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, did we mention that he's 24? Uh, now he's building a brand new photo studio in LA, turning his filmmaking and semi-podcasting career to gold, and he recently became the first person to receive a YouTube play button for being the tallest photographer on YouTube at the staggering height of seven foot four. Is all of that true, Sam? <laughs> Everything about that last part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but tell them how, how tall you actually are. I am six foot eight. So, so basically, we didn't even exaggerate that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're, yeah, I was, I was actually so having a conversation the other day with, like, with a friend of mine, and uh, I was taking photos of portraits, and she was just saying, like, oh, wow, it must be nice to be so tall. And I mean, it's literally, it sounds so dumb, but like, it's nice just having like, basically a built-in ladder to like, you can shoot down, you can shoot eye level, you can shoot you know, <laughs> all, all, all the angles, which is nice. <laughs> Oh I feel like you're the first person to say like, yeah, it's really awesome being tall because most people are like, I hit my head on everything. I mean, yeah, that's, that's I can't a given. fit into any cars. <laughs> it's so tough to go anywhere. A airplanes. Yeah, you name it. Airplane, sure. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, everybody listening, everybody listening and even watching is now getting the confirmation because the voice meets uh, the height. So yeah, if it you does. were wondering. <laughs> it all adds up. That, that leads me to uh, the next part of the po podcast where... We say um, that it's sponsored by Squarespace. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I got that. I got that down pat now. Maybe I should like, I should throw it into audition or something and just raise the raise the voice. Like <laughs> you could like remix it and make it a song. Even I bet people would love that. <laughs> I, they probably would, honestly. So, Sam, I bet a lot of people listening right now and watching this first discovered you through Instagram. Yep. You've talked about this a bit in your YouTube videos over the years, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts about when your work first started gaining traction on Instagram. Was it enough for you to gain tens to hundreds of thousands of followers so quickly? Or from the get-go, did you have your sets, sites set on something higher? Yeah, I would say, honestly, I don't know. I think you guys can probably somewhat relate to this. I don't know when you started Instagram for the most part, but for me, like this is when, gosh, I was probably, I think a freshman in high school when I downloaded Instagram. So that was, wow. I'm 24, so that was yeah, nine, nine years ago. Um, and that was when I first downloaded Instagram. My parents got me an iPhone, what was that, like five or something for, for my birthday. And I remember that that was like, I just was kind of like randomly snapping pics and putting like an Instagram filter on it. Like there wasn't, it wasn't really anything. And then long story short, I had this like, summer internship basically it's like this cool like nonprofit uh, organization in seattle that like kind of connects teenagers with uh nonprofits. so the nonprofit gets like a free worker for the summer but the mm. um, the, the actual business pays the um, like the teens to work there so it's like a it kind of everybody benefits and uh i got the privilege to work at this really cool like it's kind of like a like a just like a cool center for kids that were like obviously like underprivileged and kind of come from like rough backgrounds, but they gave me like a camera for the mm. summer. And like, that's literally how it started was, it's like some like Nikon D something, D3000 maybe. And at the end of the summer, I just ended up buying the same camera. It was like 600 bucks. And my parents were like, what are you doing? That's so much money. And like, looking back at that now, it's <laughs> hilarious. Cause like, I wish I could spend $600 on a camera. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that quickly transitioned into me just enjoying taking pictures. And like, I think once I found that there were other people on Instagram also who liked to take pictures, um, one of them was a photographer in my hometown who actually went to my high school. His name's uh, Griffin Lamb. And mm -hmm. so him and I, like, we just kind of started our photo journey together just started taking photos like as much as we could, which obviously really wasn't a lot because we went, we were in high school. <laughs> so basically every weekend I'd borrow my parents' car and just be like, hey, I'm gonna go take photos for the, like, for the day. And then I'd come back. It was always like, you know, leave at four in the morning, come back after the sun had set. And I just did that every single weekend as much as I could. Um, and I think transitioning that kind of into Instagram, uh, I think back then it was a lot easier. Like everything was new, everything was exciting and nothing had been yeah. done or copied before. So like. I think it was just really fun to be a part of that. And those are kind of the golden days. I feel like it was just really enjoyable to be a part of that. And yeah. 
I think that has definitely transitioned since. Um, but I, what I do think is, yeah, I mean, numbers wise, I was like a suggested user way back in the day. And I'm trying to think that was, I probably went from like two or 3000 followers to like maybe 30, something like that, um, in a matter of a month. And obviously that was crazy. And for those of you who don't know what a suggested user is, it's like, it's from way back, like probably in 2015, 2016. It's basically like when you signed into Instagram, there was this like random list of people that like Instagram would say, hey, you should check these accounts out because Instagram isn't like very large yet. And and mm -hmm. a lot of the times photographers would be on that list. And uh, I, I know a lot of people who have been on that list. Um, I don't really think it's a thing anymore, um, but mm -hmm. it was obviously like a really quick and easy way to get a massive following in a very short amount of time. Um, and I think a lot of people it kind of inflated their ego <laughs> a lot, to be honest with you. And mm. um, I think for me, I was just like, oh, this is cool. But like, you know, I'm still enjoying just taking pictures like this is like this is really fun. And I kind of stuck to that just enjoyment of it. And I think to this day, that's like a big reason why I still am doing what I'm doing, because I I genuinely love it. It's not for really anything else besides just like the fun in it, you know. And I think that also kind of it kind of exploded like my junior and senior year of high school. I think when I graduated high school, I probably had like three or 400,000 followers on Instagram, something like that, um, which a lot of people don't know. And like what I have to explain this to you in a way where like it didn't really mean much back then. It wasn't like mm -hmm. like these are like dog years, you know, like a year or two and social media is a very large amount of time, like you know, within like the, the realm of social media. And so it didn't really mean much, but, you know, I think it slowly kind of started to mean more. Um, and I think that Instagram journey just kind of, you know, obviously I've learned a lot throughout that and I've had a lot of friends find a lot of success with Instagram as well. Um, but I think, yeah, it's, it's really just like that whole process was, was very, very interesting to say the least. And especially at like such a young age to experience all of that. Um, I think it, it definitely kind of humbled me a lot. It was like in a good way. And I think that has also helped me kind of just have a good mindset for, you know, kind of looking at social media as a tool rather than really anything else, you know? Man, uh, it's, it's wild to hear that perspective. I think a lot of people will find it so interesting, especially young people who are listening kind of in the late teens to early 20s and not really, maybe they didn't have Instagram back then um, because yeah. they were in middle school at that point or elementary school even at that point. So they weren't really acquainted with the early years of it. Um, kind of a follow-up question to that is, do you feel like, do you feel like there are any apps or any other platforms right now that are kind of in its infancy stages or in a place where people can leverage them to their benefit similar to what you did to start a career? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I don't know, it's it's tough to say because I think the problem with, I mean, social media has to be widely accepted by a lot of people, not just, you know, photographers and filmmakers <laughs> for it to be for it to be used uh, in, in that mm -hmm. way. But I, th I do really still think that YouTube is honestly like, because it's like more of a, it's almost more of a search engine than a social media network. I think a lot of people can still find a lot of success with that. Like I'm still pretty brand new to it, honestly. Like I'm still learning, learning my way around it. But I think YouTube honestly is, is still, maybe not in its infancy, but I think it's still very possible to find um, an audience on that. And I think that's really the only one that I can think of that's like pretty big, honestly. I don't, I don't think I would ever invest any time in Facebook or Snapchat or really, you know, any other social media network that I can think of. The problem, you know, the thing about Instagram, I think in the years that I was kind of a part of it and growing in that way is um, a lot of people use that to their advantage and started to kind of break off and do other things. And I think that's what made it so valuable. And I think with YouTube, you're seeing a lot of that as well nowadays. Like some of these incredibly successful people on the platform are now transitioning and doing other things outside of it. And like, it's that, I think it's that like kind of like, I don't even know what I would use to describe that. It's just basically like kind of persona that you have on on the platform it can translate into you know success in other um, areas of life and I think YouTube honestly is, is the one that's why I'm investing so much time and, and energy and hmm. frankly money into YouTube is because I think it it really is a great way to to build not only like a single platform but I think it sets the tone for other um, avenues down the road Awesome. Sure. It's com almost completely answered a question I had yeah. later about YouTube but we could break that more no, we, we should definitely break that down <laughs> YouTube. Yeah, is, is we'll, do, we'll do that more in a bit. Um, but <laughs> sure. I guess my I guess what I'm most worried about is that you haven't taken advantage of TikTok and like used the the handle like tallest photographer, like <laughs> at tallest photographer. Uh, and then I mean, you could just like dance with your camera. I think it'd be a hit. I mean, that's the thing. You should try everything, honestly, like you should. Uh, but I think if there's one thing that I actually cringe at, it's 
photographers on TikTok, if I'll be completely honest. <laughs> like, it is very hard to watch. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what it, I don't yeah. know what it is about it, but it's just yeah. I don't know. It's not like <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a vibe. It's that's interesting to me because I think a platform like TikTok, TikTok is really powerful, and I'm actually really interested in getting oh, into some agree. of it because I I uh, I had a viral YouTube video recently and that I just cropped to vertical and threw on TikTok and it got a ton of views there. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, hmm, well. Well, maybe what like what if you broke the norm of what is the culture on this app? You know, it does that it maybe maybe you do something that isn't corny, you know, and actually is impactful and is actually super high quality because most people are totally. just filming on their phones at this that's point. That's very that's very true, and I think I mean I think I I have I didn't say TikTok honestly because I don't have any experience with it, but everyone that I've seen that's right. used it obviously has found a lot of success with it, um, and I think it's probably here to stay if I'm being completely honest. Um, sure. So yeah, I mean, I think like you said it though, it's like, you know, something like TikTok, it doesn't take a lot of effort to just like vertically crop a video you already made for something else and just throw it up. Like that's incredibly easy to do. And you know, yeah. if you're just, if you're going to do that, like you might as you might as well, there's no, there's not really any negative to that, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's why we're wonder... actually repurposing some of the, uh, the videos that we're making for rally caps. We'll be oh, doing, nice. you know, Instagram story crops already. So we might as well just throw it's, that it's exact the same, same yeah. cut onto, onto TikTok. Absolutely. So it makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah, 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 I do. I do really wonder how many people in the creative space are going to be kicking themselves two years from now if that is something that is just regularly done. Like everybody's abandoned ship on Instagram, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, if only I was investing in it." Because you have figureheads like Gary Vee, who for years have been like, "You should be investing in TikTok. You should be investing in TikTok," and then all of a sudden it blows right. up. And then, and then he's also before that even he's just like, "Hey, voice is the next thing. Voice is the next thing." And then Clubhouse shows up, and you're like. He just keeps predicting all these things, and yeah. uh, he keeps he keeps telling people like. And I also like love the balance of you don't you don't have to feel obligated to to have to do those things because that's what Gary Vee is yelling at you to do. You know, um, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and so, so something I see in you, Sam, is is you. It doesn't feel like you follow those trends like that. It feels like you are very wholesome in your approach and philosophy. We did a, a video together back a full year ago before yeah. all pandemic yeah, yeah. stuff. And we chatted a bit more about, about Instagram and hearing some of your heart behind that about like value and purpose in just being a human outside of like caring about numbers on a platform mm -hmm. was really cool to hear from someone like you who has an enormous following that people, you know, covet to, to have of their own, you know? Totally. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, like I said, we about a year ago went to LA, Stephen and I, and you know, shot we shot a couple of videos together. It was a blast. That was uh, so fun. Back in your your garage studio, which was pretty sick. Not gonna lie, it was cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, with with that, like, how do you feel about having a brand new space now? Like, we're we're you know, zooming in to your uh, to your place right now, which is you said about a thousand square feet, some natural yeah. light coming from the ceiling. Yeah. How, can you just chat a bit about that and what it's meant over you know the past few months? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I, I did kind of a big transition. Honestly, I think a lot of people looked at it probably as like, what are you doing? It's the middle of a pandemic, but I kind of saw it as like the perfect opportunity to get like, you know, honestly a good deal on a lease. So I signed a two year hmm. lease at this place and yeah, I'm loving it. I think it's so nice to have like the space to just like video just takes so much more space than photography does. You know, we got a big mm. softbox right here. We got V flats, we got uh, sound panels and like, we have like multiple different sets that we can film in here. And I think that's really the value. And honestly, you know, as, and also like, I think during the pandemic, we're all just stuck at home. So it's so nice to be able to just hop in the car and drive somewhere and like have, an, have another space to kind of just chill out at and work. Um, and I have Thomas over here as well, who's uh, been kind of like shooting and editing every single YouTube video for me for the last three months now. And that's been working really well. Um, but yeah, I think the studio itself, I want it to be more of a place of community at some point, but I think mm -hmm. obviously right now that's not really possible, but I think down the road, I'm really excited to kind of make this a bit more like community minded. You know, I just want to be able to have friends over and like I have a, a huge photo book collection back there. I just want to be able to like hang out and chat and like have a coffee machine and like I'm going to rent out probably half of it for photo shoots. I'm just going to put up like a big curtain and basically like people can rent that out. Obviously in LA, it's so easy to, <laughs> you can rent anything out. Everything's rentable here. So I'm, I'm trying to just like make it as, as nice as I possibly can for people to eventually uh, want to come shooting here. But I think as far as YouTube stuff goes, it's really allowed us to have like a really clean set um, that we don't have to move, which mm -hmm. 
back in the garage I used to have, like it was just so small that we would have to move things in order to even just like walk around. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we have everything mounted on the ceiling now, which is so nice and it just clears up so much space. So I think in terms of, it just makes it really efficient, honestly, to get stuff done. Yeah. yeah. You just kind of touched on this right now, but could you speak a little bit more to what it's meant to you to have a physical place that's not close to your home that you can drive to and, and work at and kind of use oh, yeah. as your, your workspace. Totally. Yeah. I think, I mean, I'm sure Eric can attest to this as well. Like it's, it's just, it's the separation of like your personal life and your work life. Like the second yeah. I leave this, the second I leave the studio, I'm checked out of work. Like I'm going to go enjoy myself. And when I'm mm -hmm. at home, you know, I don't, I don't think about work as much as I used to because the computer isn't, you know, in the room next door, it's, you know, a 15 minute drive away. And as silly or, you know, as like, it sounds so simple, but it, it's, it makes a massive difference, I think, in, in the way that mm. you think more than anything. And for me, that's, it's been huge because basically like when I'm here, I'm working, you know, and if I don't come here on a specific day, then I'm not thinking about work. Maybe my family's in town mm. or maybe I want to go hang out with friends or my girlfriend, like all that stuff is like much easier to enjoy in a way, because when I come here, this is when I work. And then I leave everything here except for like my iPad that I bring home with me. And like literally everything yeah. else just stays here. My computer stays here, all my camera gear stays here. And it really works, it works so well to just like separate that and like have, obviously it's a privilege to have an, another space to work at. But I think if you're getting to that point where you're looking to find something like this, like I think it's, it's very worth it. And you can always go in on it with people too to make it more reasonable. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of want to, press into that point a little bit where you said it's like it's a privilege to have it but you could definitely make the argument that no you have you have worked to get to this place to be able to afford a studio space what you know if i if i come at it from the point of a of devil's advocate if someone's listening and they're just like well i don't have the luxury of having the finances to do that like what would you say to that person who like wants that so badly and what steps can they take so that they can get to that place and i think you covered it too like in that first part or that last thing you just said is like splitting with people that's what i decided to do oh, yeah. for you know creative club absolutely and has worked phenomenally but you're like you're lone lone ranger here like <laughs> i still I don't, how are you 24 and doing this it just blows my mind <laughs> <laughs> so basically like my first studio in LA was actually in the arts district. That's where I went. That's where I met uh, Rachel and Daniel because their studio was across the hall from me. Right. And that was a really cool area. And I think they would probably agree with me with this. It's just like, it didn't have air conditioning. The power always went out and it just wasn't very yeah. like workable. A lot of times like my iMac would be plugged in sometimes just turn off in the, in the middle of an edit. And I'm like, this cannot happen. Like this is not okay. Uh, so okay. I would just, so I kind of stopped going to, a, and that's kind of what we got, what made me uh, want to go rent a house and, so I had like a studio in the backyard. That was like the big thing I wanted to find. And it was really nice. Um, and then I was just, you know what? Like, I want to try something new. I want to try like a studio, but do it my way. You know, like do it. I was originally splitting with people and I just wanted to see if it'd be a different kind of experience if I did it by myself. I'm not necessarily opposed down the road to having other people in here, honestly. Um, but I think I wanted to just be the first person for at least like the first six months and just kind of make it mm -hmm. my own first and then see what kind of physical space I had left over to kind of give out to people. Um, but I think, Back to your question about like, you know, what do you, you know, you're looking at all the success that someone has. I think social media just romanticizes all of it. Like they, you only see mm. this, this like 5% of success, the last 5% that someone's had. You don't see all of that work that they've done. You know, like, I mean, when I first moved out, like I had like, you know, a couple grand to my name, if that, like, and I was struggling <laughs> to pay my $500 a month rent in Portland. Like it was so difficult. And like, I was 18 years old. I was like, I had no idea what I was doing. Like not only, you know, emotionally as like a 18 year old kid, but like, you know, just trying to pay bills and trying to run a business. You know, like I think it mm -hmm. takes so much time and you have to realize that a lot of these struggles that you might be having as like a creative or as an entrepreneur, most people that you look up to have probably had the same experience. That's kind of what I've learned over the years. Like they've had a similar um, experience when it comes to things that you've struggled with. They've had, they share similar successes. And I think that's what gives me a lot of like comfort, you know, just knowing that like, you know, even people I look up to here in LA, like who are where I want to be, they're so much older than me, you know, and they've experienced so much more life. And like, that's, that's what mm -hmm. gives me a lot of hope and excitement. It's like, you know, I'm not, I'm going to get there at some point. I'm not, I'm not rushing the process. You know, you have to enjoy, it sounds, you know, we hit this over and over and over again, but you have to enjoy the process more than anything. If you don't, if you're only looking for the, the, you know, the outcome, the studio space or, you know, the six figure income or, you know, having employees, stuff like that, like you're never going to be happy because if you can't enjoy the process to get there, like you're setting yourself up to fail, honestly. Wisdom at 24. 
<laughs> well, hey, speaking of your age and everything that you've accomplished right now, I mean, you, the things that you've done are objectively incredible and like really big accomplishments, like age aside. Thank you. Have, have people thought that you're older than you are when you've oh, maybe yeah. met them in person or talked with them online and then like showed up to a shoot? Are they like, whoa, wait, what's going on? Definitely. And I think a little bit of like imposter syndrome kicks in, especially like when I'm on like, like I've only been on like a big, big set, like a handful of times. Um, but I think especially on those sets, I was like, if you had no idea how old I was, I was just like faking it. I'm like, you know, I got this. Like I, I, I just, it's all about like how you present yourself. It really is. And like people don't really care as long as you're like mature and professional. And honestly, you can be whatever age you want and do that. You know, it's, it's just a mindset really like maturity mm -hmm. is a mindset. And yeah, a lot of people definitely think I'm a lot closer to 30. Um, but I think, I don't know, like, I, I think as I'm getting a little bit older, obviously I'm still really young, but I think in my early twenties, I was very like self-conscious about my age. I was like, you know, I just want to, I just want to, you know, work. I just want to be respected as like someone who's actually like doing something professionally, you know? And I think as I'm getting a little bit older, it feels a little bit more like that's happening. But I think in the early mm -hmm. stages, I'm sure a lot of younger people can resonate with this. Like, you just want to be treated as like an adult, you know? And like, if, yeah. especially if you're acting like one, like there's no reason why you shouldn't be. And I think right. there's this kind of weird energy sometimes, uh, especially with like, you know, more experienced people who have been doing what you're doing for a long time, especially like in the kind of the commercial photo world, I would say, and like the filmmaking worlds. Um, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure in the wedding world as well, honestly, like a lot of people who are much older who have been doing it for a very long time. I'm not saying everybody, obviously, but I think it's, you get this weird energy that you're not, you're not ready yet. You have to, you have to go through all this crazy yeah. trouble and, you know, struggles to get, get to get to that level. And I just don't really think that's the case. You know, I think if you present yourself in a way that's really mature and professional and you show up and you do the work, like, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's epic. It probably helps a little bit because that you're like way taller than oh, you yeah. have oh, your, the voice you do. <laughs> I mean, especially the, I mean, I won't lie, especially the voice. Like I think like, especially when I'm on a, on a creative call or something, I'm sure that I'm sure that helps, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, age, age definitely is just a number for sure. Yeah. Uh, do you think teenagers or people in their young 20s can start a business without going to college? Or um, how, how did you find your success without going to school? Because you didn't, you didn't go to college, right? No, I, I just went to high school. Um, I would say, so here's my thing with college. I obviously didn't go, so I don't have that experience to like talk about really. But I, what I can kind of harp on is like my own experience. And I would say, the most important thing that I have found single-handedly for like running a successful business is literally just doing it and experience. Like you have to fail, you have to make mistakes and this is the only way you're gonna learn and, and run, you know, you can get out of college and know every technicality about, you know, filmmaking or photography or painting, you know, illustration. And like, if you don't know how to run a business, like it's gonna be very difficult. And I think a huge part of success, honestly, and especially since moving to LA, I realized this, you know, I really have wanted to break into kind of the commercial photo space as, and bring that in as a part of my business. And the more I realize that, you know, the people like people from all different kinds of backgrounds and stuff are doing the kind of stuff that I want to be doing. Some of them went to college, some of them didn't, you know, some of them like dropped out, yada, yada, yada. But I think mm -hmm. the kind of main thing that they all have in common is, you know, they know the right people and it really is just about networking and having experience. And it's, again, all these things I'm hitting home, I feel like just sounds so simple, but I think it, it really is so important to put it into practice and rather, you know, not just think about it. You actually have to, you know, obviously during a pandemic, it's really hard to network and meet people, but I think the relationships that you do have right now, you should be fostering those and, and really kind of building upon those because it, at the end of the day, you know, maybe one friend that you decided to, or maybe someone you met randomly at a coffee shop or someone you met over Instagram that you went and got a coffee with, you, you had some sort of lasting impact on them and maybe they start to work as an art director one day at a random company. They're gonna remember you if you were like a nice person mm. and you you know kind of showed up and were really interested in what they were doing. It's not that you should have the mindset of, you know, I want something from somebody. I think it's just the mindset of being a good person and being interested and also not being afraid to share what you're doing, what you're up to, um, I think is, is something mm. that's huge. And I think all of that combines, um, you can find a lot of success, you know? Something that was really profound with some of my first interactions with you, Sam, was um, like I had been following you on Instagram for a while, hashtag suggested user. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like, so I, I, I think I had seen a f maybe a few of your YouTube videos, saw that you were going after YouTube and doing that. 
Um, And so when you, I think you reached out to me or something and and that, that interaction alone made me feel really flattered and um, kind of breaking down what you were saying about um, maturity being a mindset and like, I didn't know your age. I didn't know how tall you were. <laughs> like, I didn't know anything about you, really, uh, apart from the fact that you had an enormous Instagram following and your work was stunning. Um, and so to me, it was just like, whoa, I like, I don't know if I deserve to be collaborative with someone that is like so impressive or so successful. Um, and I just want to commend you in that that I see so much of your success being tied to that kind of embracing of others and a reality of grounding yourself and not being so head in the clouds and arrogant and approaching things with this with a pompous attitude but rather one of of collaboration and one of wanting to see success in other people and just like openly sharing your success with others and like I can't I can't even imagine what like someone who's beginning in in creative and entrepreneurship is is feeling hearing some of these things from you um i'm even learning from it with like uh for me i do have the work home separation or and i struggle with putting my laptop in my backpack and still bringing it home and hearing that from you is like i actually have been doing that a couple times a, a week recently and it's like i actually really really appreciate leaving everything at the studio and just completely checking out and going home and yeah, I don't know. I'm getting all sentimental, but it's, it's really, it's just, I love conversations like this for that reason. It reinforces why we do what we do. And, Absolutely. um, it just feels if, to me, I'm just so impressed by you being at the stage of life that you're at. I'm speaking to you like I'm a 50 year old, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it, man. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it, it's, it's really encouraging and, and awesome to hear, um, from someone who's as successful as you are. Thank you. Yeah. I, I really appreciate all that. Fun to be here with you guys, honestly. <laughs> Fun to just chat. This is reminding me. This is reminding me of last year, the video that you guys Literally. made because it was the same sentimental yeah. kind of thing. I was standing yeah. behind the camera in the garage. I was just like, "This is this is really sweet right Crying. now." Like they're just kind of going off. They're, this is this is amazing. <laughs> We were way, we were way too close to each other in that video. We were like, yeah, we, we were. At the I have the desk. same desk right now, and it's like you can't really fit two people right here. This. <laughs> I think my favorite thing I also noticed from that too video is like, was like, why are they sitting so close to each other? <laughs> it's like, yeah, elbow to elbow, like, <laughs> you know, just relaxing. I feel like this this conversation we're having too right now is is cool because I literally feel like this we could have had this exact conversation verbatim like that day that we were all hanging out. And that's, yeah. So it feels really honest, which I, I like that. I like the approach you guys are going with this. Like it feels much more of like a candid conversation rather than like we're going to rapid fire, you know, questions at someone and they're just going to answer it. This feels much more like, you know, you're interacting with people and I think that's the best way to go about a podcast. Honestly, it's just really good it's, information, you know, it's cool that you say Thanks, that man. because we even had a comment recently is like we, we really wanted to build this to really showcase a lot of guests. And that's kind of how we wanted to build it in the beginning and just hear other people's expertise and their advice. Yeah. And so it was a lot. It was a lot of just like question, answer, question, answer in some of the first episodes. But I do I do feel like there's gonna be a lot of value if we chime in more and, and, mm-hmm. and do have some more conversation and still still really lean on like primarily just focusing on on you as the guest um because like we can have our own standalone episodes where steven and i talk and steven and i are even in very different places in our career too so i think a lot of people would find value in hearing what steven has to say as well um steven you're like you're similar age to to sam right now how do you how do you feel like with all that what you know given what you went through this past year with having to like completely abandon your business which was brand new like I don't know really the question I'm asking, but you get my sentiment, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's it's hugely inspiring to be able to to talk with Sam. Like we're in that same age bracket, same place of life, also. Uh, you know, committed relationships, but no kids yet, kind of kind of thing. Um, and I think on a lot of levels, it's like very similar. Um, haven't done my shoot with Audi yet for some reason. I don't know why they haven't contacted me. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> that's a little confusing, but, um, no, like, honestly, it is like, it's, it's so cool to, to see that work ethic in someone that's right in the like same stage of life on a personal level and to see your career, Sam, just be this incredible expansive thing that I'm just excited about. It gets me excited to do 
similar things. Um, and it kind of also honestly shows me what's possible too. Cause I've, I've had similar insecurities about age before of like, oh man, like I'm so young. No one's going to take me seriously. I've usually had older friends and kind of kept the company of older people. And I've always been like the younger person yep. around <laughs> in whatever context that might be. Totally. Um, and also the tallest one, ironically enough. Uh, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's like a really relatable thing to talk about, honestly. And it's so, so affirming to hear your thoughts on that, having been, having done this for so long and found so much success with it and just done it in such a humble way and a very kind way. So I hmm. love it, man. That's awesome. It's cool to hear. Cause honestly, I mean, a big reason why I'm very passionate about other young people finding like what they want to do early on and mm -hmm. just like pursuing it. I want other people who maybe are a similar age to me or younger than me to just see what I'm doing and be like, I can do this right now. Like I don't have to wait until like some random year in my life to like get things done. Mm -hmm. And like, I think the more that you start early on, like I'm a walking testament to what potentially you could do the earlier you start, you know, like I picked up a camera when I was 15, like I'm not saying you have to do the same, but like anything is better than nothing, you know? So I think mm -hmm. the more that you just kind of get things going, I think is, is, is huge. Just kind of just put your best foot forward and show up every day. I think that's, that's huge. Love it's that, arguably the best time to get it all done and to oh. like go after it, you, you know, no responsibility, you know, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Being, being the guy in the room that has three children and you know, the expectation that like I have a hard deadline and I need to be home and I need to be present, you know, mm -hmm. um, that, that whole sentiment is like, Hey, if you, if you have time to pursue this stuff now and you could build a career because you're passionate on it, um, or even just because it fulfills you and it's a side hustle or just a hobby, like, why not? Why not do yourself a favor in pursuing that thing while you have the flexibility to be do to be doing it? Mm -hmm. When you know when you can be flexible with where you live and you know sleeping on a mattress on the floor and you know like <laughs> grinding it out in that way to try to pursue those things, um, I think that's really valuable. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm kind of at this existential. I'm not quite that middle age yet, but like <laughs> having three kids and being this far into it now, it's like you start having, you start having those thoughts of like, man, do I like, is it, is it already over for me for the things I could pursue? And the truth is it's, it's not, it's not over at all. Like mm -hmm. I think Gary Vee is really motivating in that sense of like, he always tells people who are like 40 and 50, he's like, you have so much time, you know, um, willing that you, are able to survive the average rate, you know, um, you have time to do it. But I think the sentiment of just going after it when you have so much time around you with less responsibilities is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Sam, did you have any mentors in, in the process of mm. building your own business and building your, your photo style? That's a great question. Um, I think honestly, like a lot, I mean, I have a couple people here in LA that like I've like, have just helped me so much. Uh, there's a photographer named Justin Chung. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his work at all. Mm -mm. Um, you should definitely check out his work. He's incredible. And he really is just like, just, I don't know. He's so, I love like not only obviously what he shoots, but like, again, going back to like him as a person, he's just like such a, he's willing to help. He's helped me so much, introduced me to so many cool people here and very like, you know, indirectly. Like it's a really, I, I, I remember meeting up with him for coffee, like a year and a half ago, maybe. And like, so ever since that point, he's just really like been able, like he's just helped me a lot, answered all my questions. And like, I want to be that for somebody, you know, in the future, you know, mm -hmm. be able to like mm -hmm. help other people find success. Um, but I think even, even before LA, I would say I always have kind of gravitated towards just older people, um, especially like professionally, just cause I think that they have experienced a lot more, honestly, to be, to be completely honest. And I think that translates really nicely into like advice and, you know, life experience. And obviously I, I have a pretty decent amount of life experience for how old I am, but nothing like someone who's, you know, 10 or 15 years older than me. And mm -hmm. I think realizing that early on is, and realizing that like, you know, I, I, we just talked about obviously about being young and being excited about that, but also like, you know, you're young, like <laughs> it's okay to like, it's okay to admit <laughs> that and, and embrace that you don't know things. I think that's been like mm. transformative for me, honestly, like so much to like really just admit that I don't know things and like learn it, you know, like be okay, be down to learn. I think the moment you start like kind of pretending that you know everything, you're never going to, you know, be as successful as you potentially could be. And I think, you know, with someone like Justin, for example, um, I would say also there's a guy here named Jared Chambers, photographer as well. Oh, yeah. Um, 
he's extremely talented and I've learned, honestly he's he's been a huge help as well and even just i think the coolest thing is I, I would say mentor also you know i think something that's almost even more important especially to photography you got to hang out with people that inspire you you have to hmm. like you can't you know it's not maybe you enjoy someone on a personal level but maybe their work doesn't really inspire you you can hang out with them but maybe you know when you go take photos when you have your free time you're going to go do it with someone that like, really inspires you because guess what you're going to learn mm. stuff and you're going to really enjoy your mm. time there and ask great questions and overall just really be i think much more excited about the whole process um, i think for me that's what really excites me is just seeing people so successful and just like justin for example is just doing incredible things and that gets me really excited. That doesn't like, you know, put me down. It was like, oh, I'm never going to get there. I'm never going to do that. I'm like, dude, what you're doing right <laughs> now is incredible. And like, I want, I'm like, I'm so excited, so excited for you. And also like, just motivates me to just like get my ass in gear, honestly, and just figure, figure out like what I want to be doing and get to, get to that level of success at some point. Hmm. Yeah. Benj said something similar. He was our first guest on. Oh yeah. That was an amazing episode, by the way. That was great. Thank you. Um, he is it's all him. <laughs> um, yeah, just like the whole being stoked for the people who you interact with or who you follow and not gearing more of your energy in that direction than just being bitter or salty or jealous mm -hmm. and comparing yourself to them. There's so much more freedom and uh, it, yeah, it just feels so much better to have the alternate of what you're saying and being excited for one another so that bitterness doesn't manifest itself in your relationship with that person if you get to interact with them or collaborate with them Absolutely. and it lifts it lifts both of you up instead of you know holding that grudge that um doesn't allow you to collaborate and doesn't allow you to be inspired by one another um super powerful yeah i think it's yeah. I, I already said it, it was transformative but like really like that mindset of just being happy for the people in your life rather than, mm -hmm. you know, jealous, like it is everything. Honestly, it changes your entire outlook on, on life. Honestly, it really does. Like, I, and I think not only that, but like, you know, I, like I said, I think another thing that's been massive for me is just, again, admitting that I don't know stuff, even like we can talk about it in a little bit, but this whole like YouTube yeah. experience and switching to video has been like such a process for me to like learn and understand. Mm -hmm. And like, Dude, I, that's I had no, perfect. Idea, no idea what I was doing at all. But like, you know, I've just like, <laughs> even like, even like just working with Thomas, I learned so much every single day and I've, I've worked with a lot of really talented uh, filmmakers here in LA ever since moving here. And I think they have just taught me so much about like the whole art of filmmaking. Like I had no, I, I was shooting like, you know, like a one over 200 shutter speed on like a 5D Mark IV, like 60 frames a second. And like, it looks so bad. And like, <laughs> here I am now like making like pretty polished looking stuff. You know, it's like, it, it's, it's literally just being down to learn stuff, you know, it really is. Mm -hmm. You said it twice now, down to learn DTL, put it on a shirt. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Elkins Co. I'm about to start a podcast um, called DTL. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's a great it's a great transition into talking YouTube more because I kind of wanted to unpack that a bit. Like, what made you want to start doing more YouTube when you had so much success using an app like Instagram and getting sponsorships and shooting commercial work? Did, did that not feel like enough to you? Did you see the opportunity for YouTube? Like, what was your philosophy and like, what were you thinking? And like, be, be perfectly like honest with, because like for me, I definitely saw YouTube and I was like, that, that could make money. Oh, that 100%. could be a thing, you know? Um, but it could also help me connect with people and satiate that feeling uh, similar to you of seeing success for other people mm -hmm. and sharing my experience so that they can, I, yeah, we share yeah. that, that same sentiment, but like, yeah, what was, what was the thought process a few years back when you made that decision? No, definitely. I mean, yeah, this, this might be a mouthful, but I think, so again, kind of tracing back to Instagram. Um, I obviously had a lot of friends as well who really just, we all relied on Instagram for our only source of income. That was basically all of our, mm. all of our, all of our money was coming from a single revenue stream, Instagram. And like, I just kind of had this gut feeling that I was like, this is not going to last. It is, and it mm. didn't, you know, like it did not. Like for example, last year, I don't even think I'm, I think I made maybe a, I don't even know if I made a single dollar off Instagram, like very little. Wow. Like it's not the same as it was. Um, and obviously I can attribute a lot of that to just not really posting as much as I used to. Um, but sure. I think back then, like, I mean, back when I started YouTube, I mean, I posted a couple of travel videos, they blew up cool. But like, I knew that if I wanted to make this consistent, I need to have like a plan. And I didn't realize that plan until, you know, maybe like even like a year ago, <laughs> like this, this whole process has been very, very difficult for me to kind of try and figure out. Um, but I think, I don't know. I just, I thought that like, 
I don't know why, I'm really glad that I, I did it obviously, but I, yeah. I think it was really uncomfortable at first. Um, I didn't have a lot of, I don't think I had nearly as much like self-confidence as I do now, like even talking to you guys, like this would be a, a totally different kind of thing if I had never started a YouTube channel. Like it's made me mm. such a confident person, you know, and I think that has been a weird, but really great byproduct of doing YouTube is just like, I think everyone should just like be in front of the camera. It really makes you just like more confident in yourself. And like for me, it's, I've always been this kind of tall, awkward guy, like pretty shy. And I think YouTube has made me a lot more confident in myself, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to money though, obviously like, yeah, YouTube is an amazing source of income. Like it's, I would say in the pandemic year last year, obviously it's not normally what it, what it is like this year already, like photo work is, is picking up quite a bit, but I didn't get a single photography job. I don't think last year at all. And like, if it wasn't for YouTube, wow. I don't know what I'd be doing. You know, YouTube was my almost a hundred percent of my income last year. And like, obviously I say YouTube as like a, an umbrella, but wow. you know, I'm talking about like courses. I'm talking about like, uh, yeah. all, you know, affiliate links, all that stuff. Like it comes from this umbrella of YouTube. And that's where I see YouTube being so amazingly, like amazing for really anyone, because it's not just YouTube, you know, like I, I rarely ever even, uh, check on AdSense because there's already a sponsor in my video. Like I like being able to control that, for example, you know, like if there's already a sponsor mm -hmm. in the video, um, it's just cool. There's a lot more control and I don't really feel as bad uh, about like promoting stuff on YouTube as I do on Instagram. Instagram's just very in your face. You know, it's like, I, hmm. here's an ad, here's an ad, here's an ad. And it's like, I don't really want to like kind of feed that, <laughs> feed that beast anymore. Like <laughs> I, if I don't have to, like I love just being able to post what I want on there and my, post mm -hmm. my, uh, post, you know, just photos that I want kind of, it's almost kind of like a pseudo portfolio almost of like what you might see on my website. Um, here's kind of a, a cool like visual mood board of like what I'm interested in right now. And obviously I say that from a place of privilege, you know, getting to where I'm at now, I don't have to rely on Instagram anymore. Um, uh, but now, you know, again, like I think about it all the time, what if I didn't start YouTube? What if I didn't start YouTube? And like, I don't know what I would be doing right now. You know, like I think I've had to rely on it so heavily throughout the last like year or so. And, and I'm really glad yeah. that I did because I think if I didn't, if I was just doing photography, I'd be sitting at home feeling sorry for myself, which, you know, I still did <laughs> even with YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been a hard year for everybody, but I think yeah. this year has really allowed me to grow this YouTube channel and get it to a point now where it's like solidified, it's consistent, and now I have time to do other things as well. So I think it's it's been huge and it's probably been one of the best decisions I've ever made, honestly, in, in, in my career, I would say mm -hmm. easily. And to anyone out there who's on the fence of starting a YouTube channel, I would highly recommend it. Like, don't don't feel like you can't do it because if I can do it, if I can talk in front of the camera, it really you know, anybody can. It just takes it just takes dedication. Hmm. I was scrolling through your YouTube channel the other day, and I kind of like what you said about having it almost be a portfolio in a sense. I was noticing the consistency of your thumbnails and how beautiful everything was. It was almost as if I was scrolling through your website because it's all just fantastic images for the most part it's like relatively minimal text and just looks gorgeous i was just like oh my yeah, gosh thank you the further i go the better it gets it's amazing <laughs> and i think there's a there's this conversation happening especially right now because of how much youtube is growing about you know the thumbnail is the the gateway into <laughs> a video and if something gets put into recommended oh, yeah. that's got to be the thing to get people in the door mm -hmm. otherwise no one's going to be interested is there a reason that you haven't done the more like clickbaity thumbnails or like the things that could maybe draw more attention and, and stuck really with just kind of keeping your work front and center? Honestly, no, there's not really not a huge reason. I'm honestly not very, I can't, it's so hard for me to think of a thumbnail and title. It's like the, like I struggle so much with that. <laughs> but like yeah, half the same. time it's just like, I mean, we put so much emphasis now on like the visuals of a video. Like I kind of came up with this concept basically of like, you know, if we're going to shoot a review of a camera, and I'm going to take pictures with the camera. I want the be I want the the footage of me shooting to be just as good as those photos, if not better mm. in some instances. And yeah. I think once I've stuck to that mindset, um, a lot of times we just pick a random frame from the video because it's like really pretty. I'm just like, you know, let's use that one. That looks great. Um, yeah. But I think honestly, there's not really a reason. Like I would, I mean, I'm not. I don't. I wouldn't say this necessarily like my style. I think Eric, honestly, you do a really good job just like having like an art, an artful like thumbnail that like you know isn't like. You still have like a nice like clean color palette in your thumbnail versus like some people it's yeah. like oh saturated yellow saturated orange it's like this thumbnail this video looks stressful based on the thumbnail and like you know i think yeah. eric does eric does a really good job of like bent like blending the two i frankly just don't i'm not very good at it if i'm being honest like i, I maybe should put more emphasis on that but that's really my reason hmm. there is no reason <laughs> yeah it's it's it seems silly uh, you know sometimes you have to 
sometimes you have to play the game, you know, if oh, you sure. want to, based on what the, the platform is, you know, doing algorithmically, if you will. Absolutely. Um, and it, that does kind of, it does kind of make me nervous about YouTube. Like what will the, what will the future of it be? You, you know, you said earlier mm -hmm. in the conversation, I actually agree with you. I do feel like YouTube is still kind of in its infancy. I was saying that literally three years ago that it was in its infancy and it is quickly becoming, if not already, like the main source of entertainment for most people across the world. Oh yeah. And, um, that's insane. Like that's just nuts. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to, I appreciate you saying that about, uh, the thumbnails that I make. Cause I have been trying to be more intentional about it, but yeah. I never want it to like rule my thoughts and rule, you know, what I choose to do and creative decisions I make. Totally. I don't, I don't think it would ever like it, your thumbnails never like turn me away. It's like, oh, I don't want to watch that. The thumbnails crazy. You know, it's, it's more like, right. I think there's a really tasteful way to do it. Like, which I would, I would say that you definitely do. And there's a very untasteful way to do it, you know, which I don't really think, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a very small group of people, I think in our niche, like of, you know, photography and like filmmaking and mm -hmm. stuff on YouTube, like there's like a happy medium, you know, I think because we all obviously have like an artistic taste, um, but we also, sure. you know, you want people to see the hard work that you put into a video. And like, frankly, right. like, again, YouTube is a search engine. People are going to click on something they think looks cool or, you know, something mm -hmm. they read and that sounds cool, you know? So I think there's definitely like a happy medium to it. I, I frankly just, I'm still learning that. <laughs> yeah. But even at the end of the day too, it's like, it's all in balance, right? You know, like totally. you could play that game too, but also make stuff that is, you're going to be proud of and mm -hmm. is going to, yeah, satiate that appetite of you wanting to be creative and just stuff that you are proud to share with the world. Mm -hmm. And if that means that you don't make a Mr. Beast style thumbnail, you know, <laughs> it's like, Totally. You know, and so much of this, so much of this is applicable across a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of, a lot Definitely. of hustling and side hustles, because most of the ways we market ourselves these days are through these platforms. And, um, I guess, yeah, I wasn't planning on asking this, but do you, do you think there's a lot of value in doing something like an email list or an app like community where you can text people? Uh, because like, I just keep hearing these things. I, you know, saw a video recently, I think it was Roberto Blake. He was like, none of the stuff you have on YouTube or Instagram or any of these platforms is yours. Like you don't have access to your audience really. If like they could shut it down if, if they want to, you know, mm -hmm. and That's if you build point. your career on something like that, like how do you feel in that process? Have you been working to do that? I've felt this terror of like, I haven't been doing that and I feel almost like I need to. So if everything shuts down, at least I still have an email list to like right. reach out to people. No, it's a, that's a good point. Um, I would say, I mean, I've, so, I've sold like courses now for like, almost four years, um, the different mm -hmm. variants of courses. And like, that's become a pretty significant part of, of my income, I would say. And from that, like I, I know that the people buying that are at the very least interested in like what I'm teaching. Um, mm. and, and if, you know, and if, if not more, you know, maybe me as, you know, the individual, maybe they're buying this course because they want me to talk about it. And, the more you think about that, the more it's like, oh, I have, okay, so I have these people that are interested in me. I mean, they might be interested in other products or other things. And like, I obviously I sell everything through a, a Shopify store and I have everybody's email, um, but I don't, I don't like using it very often. Um, I only use something like that when I'm, when I'm launching something that like, I really want people to take, take notice of. Um, that's yeah. really the only time I will ever use any sort of email list. But I think there's a lot of value in that because I think email marketing is still one of the most effective ways to, to market to people yeah. because it feels really personal. You know, it, it doesn't feel like just a random ad on Instagram that you're scrolling through, you know, uh, it feels right. very, feels very personal and it feels very like unobtrusive. Like you can click on it if you want, you know, if you don't want to, you can just mm -hmm. archive it. And frankly, I'm not going to care. It's okay. Um, right. You know, it's like, it's very, it's a nice way of, you know, kind of letting people know what's going on, uh, but also like, yeah. you know, it's kind of hands, you know, hands off in a way. Um, so I think it's, I think it's a great idea. I don't think, I think, what you were saying about that, uh, that video you watched, I would say you're also getting from being on the internet, you're getting a lot of like maybe notorieties is the word. Like you're, you're getting, you're getting known right as a person and like that will transfer, maybe not transfer, you know, one to sure. one in terms of people that are subscribing to you. But you know, in the future, there's probably going to be something new that eventually, you know, maybe we're talking 10, maybe YouTube just dominates for the next decade. And I would not honestly be, I would not be surprised. 
Um, but I, I think it will. Yeah. Yeah. But I think eventually something new is going to pop up and those people are going to be interested in you as the person, you know, especially on YouTube. Sure. It's very personal. Yeah. Instagram, like people don't care about me as a person. Like on Instagram, they want to see my photography. Right. But like YouTube, they're watching, mm. they're mm. listening to you. And mm. I think that's why it's so interesting. Like I, I don't know, I'm still like messing around with it. I'm not really sure like yeah. what, ex- what exactly that means yet. But I think it's really interesting uh, to see like where that potentially might go. But I think that's why building a YouTube audience is so great is because they're probably going to follow you wherever you go, you know, like for the mm. most part, obviously it's not going to be a hundred percent of them. Like I said, but a good chunk of people are going to be interested in what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, it definitely takes the phrase like you are your biggest asset to like the next level, you know, it's oh, like absolutely. you are your brand in that sense. You are like literally the figurehead of, of everything that you're building. Uh, yep. Yeah. Definitely. Sweet. Um, I think I had one more question about, I guess <laughs> this is totally off topic, but it seems like a lot of people are leaving LA and a lot of it seems oh, yeah. to be because of price. Like th- they're just like, Hey, if the internet exists, do I really need to be this close to people who are doing creative things or, you know, are at the top of their game in this creative industry, this entrepreneurial thing? Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like you want to stay if you, if you are like what, what is making you stay? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a yeah, it's a great question. It's a very hot topic, I would say. Um, I right. Think the, I think the pandemic, especially you know, LA is easily the strictest area of the country when it comes to like restrictions because of COVID, obviously. So I think a lot of people don't see a lot of value in it right now, and I can honestly understand that. I frankly don't either. <laughs> like it's it's hard to imagine a world or a life outside of what's happening right now, but it exists, mm. and it's honestly not as far off as I think we have thought in the past. Like, you know, I don't think any of us really know mm-hmm. a date, but I think it's definitely trending towards that way of being somewhat okay again. So I think, mm-hmm. I don't know, my, my mindset is I've lasted a year through through LA. Like, why would I leave? Like, I've already been here. Like, mm-hmm. And I've already invested so much time and energy to meet amazing people here. The people, honestly, in LA, if you can find the right people here, I think that's what keeps a lot of people here is just like community mm-hmm. of people. Um, and I think... The thing about LA is it's just so easy to get stuff done. Like it's it's literally seventy yeah. degrees outside and beautifully sunny right now. Like we can, we can go shoot. <laughs> I can literally go shoot like a spring and summer lookbook if I wanted to tomorrow, and it's gonna look beautiful. You know, it's like it's just so easy. It's so I mean, I, maybe easy isn't the right word. It's just convenient. Everything's really it's convenient. Just, yeah. And there's beautiful yeah. filming locations, and there's really cool people to work with. Like I have like basically like a rolodex of different people that I've shot that I can always call on for a YouTube video, or you know. I have this shoot. Hey, you want to come model for this? Here's what here's uh, here's what I can pay you, and it's just like I don't know. I think I won't live here forever, but I think I'm just getting started in terms of like my my time here. Like I I would love to live here all the way through my 20s as as, as for this point in my life right now. That might change, yeah. Um, but I really do love it, and like I love just California as a whole. I think it's just really exciting, and. I don't have a ton of complaints, honestly. Like, I think a lot of people just focus on the negative parts of LA, and yeah, obviously, there's there's quite a few negatives to living here. But I think, I don't know, like why, if you're focusing on that, then yeah, go leave. Like if you don't like it here, like it's not going to miss you, <laughs> like as a location, you mm. know. So, yeah, you know, I think the right people will stay, knowing the people that want to be here. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people are leaving, and it's transitioning to like. I think you're going to see other cities pop up as like big creative hubs at some point. Like I think like Salt Lake City and Austin, Chicago, mm. you know, like all all these places that are just a fraction of what it costs to live in LA. Like it's so like, I've always had this thought in my mind. It's like wherever I move next, everything is going to be cheaper. My car insurance is going to be cheaper. My rent's going to be cheaper. Going to dinner is going to be cheaper. Gas is going to be cheaper. Like literally everything is going to be cheaper than living here. But there's a certain like charm to being here and just feeling like, you know, like it's, it's again, tracing it back to meeting the right people. It's so, you know, you're what there's that, there's that like saying that's like you're one person away from meeting anyone in LA. And it really is true. The same with the same goes with New York. And New York is probably like half a person, honestly. But here, I would say, <laughs> here, I would say it's just like so, it's so like you're so interconnected with other people who are very like minded. And I think for this stage in my life, it's a, it's a good place to be. I think if I was a bit older, um, I might have a different opinion on that, honestly. But I think right now it's like, why not? You know, like I, I'm, I want to look back and feel like I actually, you know, did something that was fun and, you know, unique. And I think living in LA is, it's been great. You know, I'm I just coming up on, on three years living here now, which is just pretty crazy to think about, honestly. Like I, I moved out almost six years ago uh, from my parents' house. Wow. And I kind of, in a lot of ways, never looked back. You know, I, I, yeah. I really just tried to, 
to make things happen. And I think I'm so appreciative now of the life that I have and like even just being able to pay rent and like be able to go out to dinner and I don't know, like it feels very, I feel very grateful for, for where I'm at. And I think I've definitely worked really hard to get here, but I don't know. I think LA is, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's really, I wake up every day and I'm like, wow, the best people in my specific industry are here and they're waking up today going to do, you know, maybe they're working on like a feature film set shooting on an IMAX camera or they're shooting like on a, you know, $3 million production set shooting like commercial images for Ford or something, you know, like all that exists here Mm -hmm. and it's happening here. And like, I think that's, what's so exciting. It's like, you feel very inspired to be here. And I think, I'm sure you guys can relate when you visit here at the very least. There's a cool energy here. It's like it's calm, totally. but it's also like when it's time to work, it's time to work. And everyone here knows how to work, mm-hmm. which I think is pretty cool. It's mm-hmm. awesome. For anyone so, just listening to this episode, you should head over to YouTube and watch it also because Sam has been smiling ear to ear this entire time. And it's just <laughs> the most contagious <laughs> smile I've ever seen. It's great. I'm, I'm having a good time, honestly. Like, I mean, even after this, literally, we're, we're just so, I mean, I could say it on this podcast, but we're, I was talking to Eric about we're <laughs> launching a Patreon, which I'm really excited about. Hey, and we're filming nice. almost the entire month of content today, um, which is, which is going to be, uh, I was telling Thomas, like in <laughs> coupled with this podcast, it's like, that's so many words I'm speaking today. But uh, <laughs> again, like, I think it's a good thing. It's good to like challenge yourself and, you know, even if you don't get to all of it today, it's not the end of the world. But I think, uh, you know, again, just getting stuff done, you know, so I can enjoy myself on the weekend. I can, you know just mm-hmm. wake up super late in the morning and just relax. Like it's, it's great, you know? But I think I try to treat this very much so as like a Monday through Friday thing. Mm-hmm. And I think Eric, you could probably attest to that as well. Like it's obviously you have like family commitments and stuff as well. So I think keeping it rigid like that, it really helps. Honestly, it does. Mm-hmm. Like it's no working on the weekends. I used to work all the time on the weekends. And it's like this whole mindset yeah. of like, oh, you have to work every single day and put as many hours as you can. It's like, I think if you, you got to work I, don't, I forget who I saw this on some podcast, some podcast, but it was like basically like the idea of working smart versus hard, like yep. working, working smart is basically devoting time to things that you actually need to do versus like, you know, I'm going to work 12 hours on my website today or something like that. It's like, dude, if you have the money, go pay someone to do that for you. Or like, you know, like mm-hmm. you, if you don't need to do it and when you get to a certain point in your career, you can start having help, you know, and I think that's, mm-hmm. that's a huge, that's a whole, I'll say a whole nother topic, but like, yeah, man, it's, yeah. <laughs> great where can people find you sam drop drop all the knowledge uh i mean yeah check out my youtube or instagram uh if you want to check out my patreon it's not really live yet but it will be <laughs> um, it will be yeah check out check out my uh check out my website as well uh samuelalkins.co Rock and you know. roll. appreciate you dude yeah this is thank you so much yeah this was this was great very very fun to talk with you guys likewise man hopefully you guys are in cool. la soon We'll, uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be sitting at coffee at some point. You know. <laughs> yeah. Heck yes! Can you make it for me, yes. master of pour over? Absolutely. <laughs> Sweet man, thanks again. All right. Talk soon. Yeah, no problem, guys. Take care. Take care, Sam. Yeah.